Welcome to Crazy Hank TV. It's a story of a lovely lady. Yes, we're going to do Facts Behind the Brady Bunch, and you can thank me later for not singing the opening theme song. Um, before we go on, though, I am going to play a little clip from the first season of the opening credits, and I want you to look closely at Christopher Knight, who plays Peter Brady. Uh, I, I don't know what the deal is. He couldn't look straight. I mean, look, look right about now. He can't look straight. Uh, he's looking down. He's looking around. He he looks like he's on something or he's possessed. I mean, I, I gotta say, I gotta say, Christopher Knight. Uh, Peter was probably my favorite character. Okay, who am I kidding? Who am I kidding? Uh, Marie McCormick, uh, Marsha, 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 was probably my favorite character. And uh, you know, I was I was a young young kid at the time. But Christopher Knight again, you you beat up Buddy Hinton, and you you have the line that I to this day still say. I still say, every time I hear the word pork chop, I say pork chops. And applesauce. That's what we're having, Alice. Pork chops and applesauce. I say that anytime someone says the word pork chop, I say that. And now I find out you couldn't look straight. You couldn't look straight ahead. Of course, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I'm just having some fun. What we're really here for is discuss some, maybe some facts that you knew about, some you didn't know about, like I said earlier in this uh, episode. So let's get going with some facts about the Brady Bunch. When casting the six Brady kids, Sherwood Schwartz, the show's creator, wasn't yet sure what the parents would look like. He hadn't cast the actors yet. So his goal was to have 12 children actors in reserve, three blonde girls, three blonde boys, three brunette girls, three dark-haired boys. Uh, so later on, uh, naturally uh, strawberry blonde Mike Lookinglin was Schwartz's first choice for the role of the youngest son, Bobby. But when the brown-haired Robert Reed was cast as the dad, Lookalin had to endure his hair being dyed in a variety of colors so it would look appropriately dark under the harsh studio lights. Susan Olsen, who played Cindy, was a natural blonde, but not light enough to suit the producers. Olsen's hair was regularly bleached to give her the adorable toehead look on camera. Unfortunately, the process eventually uh, caused clumps of Susan's hair to fall out during season two. She tearfully presented her case to the head honcho Schwartz, who immediately ordered the staff to leave Cindy's hair alone. So there you go. Hair was very important to the success of the Brady Bunch. Gene Hackman was in contention to play Mike Brady. For the role of Mike Brady, there were a number of men who wanted to interview, including Gene Hackman, recalled Schwartz. Uh, Paramount Pictures wouldn't even give the okay for Gene Hackman to be interviewed because he had a very low TVQ. TVQ is a survey that executives use to determine the audience familiarity with their performance. TV executives don't admit to this existence of TVQs, but it's commonly employed in casting. They finally chose Reed because he was already under contract uh, to Paramount, and there's a certain amount of marquee value because of his co-starring role in the popular legal drama, The Defenders. Uh, the year after the Brady Bunch debuted, unknown Gene Hackman with no TVQ starred in The French Connected and won an Academy Award for Best Actor and has been a major star ever since, added Schwartz. Florence Henderson wasn't the first Mrs. Brady. Comedic actress Joyce Belafonte was so close to inking the contract to play Mrs. Brady that she was used in most of the screen tests with the various child actors from their auditions. In fact, one reason Eve Plum landed the role of Jan because of her physical resemblance to Belafonte. Originally, Schwartz envisioned Mrs. Brady as a wacky mom type, with such like a Lucille Ball in yours, mine, and, and ours. But the cast dynamics changed when Emmy Award-winning actress Amby Davis signed to play housekeeper Alice. Uh, Alice would more than fulfill the wackiness uh, and more grounded down-to-earth mother was required to maintain the balance. Texas-born musical theater star Florence Henderson got the job, and Bolfant was went on to a successful career of her own, including playing Murray's wife on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. Uh, so there you have it. Florence Henderson wasn't the first choice, uh, but I think it worked out. Florence Henderson was perfect as Mrs. Brady. Henderson wasn't around when filming began on the first six episodes. Florence Henderson, who wore a wig during her first season on the show because her hair had been cropped short for a recent starring role in the off-Broadway revival of South Pacific. I didn't know that she wore a wig during the first season. Uh, she, she was in Denmark when she received word that the Brady Bunch pilot had been sold, and so they started the show without me, Henderson told NPR in 2014. They did the six episodes without me, and I then filled in when I got back to the state. So that's interesting that she was not there for the first six episodes. They filmed it and then kind of put her in here and there when they uh, 
had a chance when she got back. So another interesting fact that I did not know about. Not only could Christopher Knight not look straight ahead, he couldn't sing. He couldn't carry a tune. Now Christopher Knight will has admitted to this. He just couldn't do it. He didn't have the he didn't have the chops for it. Knight was encouraged to lip sync while most of the other kids sang a musical episode. It was decided, however, that the lack of a vocal powerness could be played in for on the Do Re Mi episode where Peter's voice had began to change, you know. When it's time to change, when it's time to change. That's the best I can do right now because I'm older and my voice isn't cracking anymore. But there you go. Peter Brady, Christopher Knight could not sing. And they, they did a lot of singing and, you know, the, you know, got to keep on, keep on, keep on. And I can't sing either, but I'm, I'm, I'm having some fun. So, you know, if you want to skip ahead, skip ahead. But anyway, Christopher Knight could not sing. Now we ask the question, did Mike Brady hate his kids. Now, Mike Brady was an architect. He designed the Brady house. He's, he created, he designed it. Now, the six kids shared one bathroom with no toilet. I think that's well known that, they, that there was no toilet. If you look at the early scenes, especially when they're in the bathroom, there's no toilet. Six kids, no toilet. So again, we asked the question, did Mike Brady hate his kids? Because if you're going to design a house, you have to have a toilet, at least, at least one toilet in the house. Um, I do want to say this though too that you know have you ever noticed that Mike Brady's den his, his is huge it's it's mammoth now the kids rooms especially the boys room is really small is he selfish too is Mike was Mike Brady selfish he has this huge den to do his work that he did when he was at work all day long but he comes home I need a place to get away from the kids uh, but my den is bigger than the kids, especially the boys' room. But anyway, I'm just throwing it out there. But there was no toilet for the six kids to share. The Brady Bunch show was never a huge hit. The Brady Bunch show that has never been off the air since it, it, it first premiered, as in several different countries, but it was never a huge hit with the Nelson ratings. Uh, in fact, it never managed to crack the top 30 in shows, but it did well enough to run five seasons, which gave Paramount enough episodes to sell as package for syndication. Syndicated returns were often shown in the late afternoons, which gave more exposure to the younger audience. As a result, the show's fan base grew exceptional after that and ceased production and continues to grow today as each younger generation discovers it. Now, the only sad thing is the actors from the show is, you know, because like Seinfeld and and friends, they get huge residual checks each each year, you know, every time those episodes are played. The current actors, you know, those actors that were on the uh, Brady Bunch, the, especially the child actors and stuff, get nothing. They got their original contract, I guess, which they did sign, but how times have changed because they get nothing for any of those episodes. But there you go, it was never a huge rating bonanza for the Brady Bunch, which I kind of shocks me because I, I was very popular. When, when I was a kid, it was popular with us kids growing up. Now, the scene where Marsha gets hit in the face with a football where Peter throws the football uh, when Christopher Knight couldn't throw the football at the target. Now, here's, again, what, what, I hate to keep picking on Christopher Knight, but he can't look straight, he can't sing, and now he can't throw a, a football. Uh, producer Lloyd Schwartz said he stepped in and threw a perfect spiral that hit uh, Maureen McCormick in the nose. So when you see her going, oh, my nose, oh, my nose, uh, that is she really got hit in the face with a football. So hats off to her for sucking it up because that couldn't have felt good. Here's something I really didn't know, and I've watched the show a billion times. The back door doesn't have glass. The sliding glass door isn't glass, it's just a screen door. In order to keep light from reflecting off the glass, the producers remove the glass from the door. Every time you see Alice open the door to call the kids in for dinner, she's really doing more work than she has to. I, again, I've never noticed that. So next time I watch The Brady Bunch, I will be looking for that. Robert Reed had a turbulent relationship with the show. He often uh, clashed with the show's producers. He frequently disagreed with the producer about the direction of the show and was even removed from the set one time. So. There you have it, Robert Reed. I think he was more of a classical actor and playing the part of the Brady Bunch, maybe he wanted to be more realistic or I don't know, but he, he clashed with the producers. And so there you go. And also I wanted to mention that Fluffy, who's in the pilot, the, the girl's cat, uh, I guess they did, the boys went out because there is no Fluffy the cat after that. He's just in the pilot. That's it. Fluffy was never to return again. Few closing facts, I guess Barry Williams and um, Christopher Knight, who I've been picking on this whole episode, are best friends in real life, are really good friends in real life. They attended each other's weddings, so they remain really good friends through time. And also, uh, Robert Reed was written out of the c series finale, probably because of, like I said earlier, he had problems with the producers. 
But there you are. There's the Brady Bunch. Uh, a great show. Uh, still on today. Generations after generations have enjoyed it. Again, I was just a young child when the show came out and couldn't wait to watch the Brady Bunch, the Partridge Family, and all the other shows on Friday night. Um, but that's all I got. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. All that fun stuff. And we'll be back next week with a different video.